I'm 19 years old, standing on a worn out wooden porch, smoking a cigarette. I'm fighting this feeling of anxiousness, like I've swallowed my tongue. For a while, I've been couch surfing, so when my co work, uh, my social worker calls me saying that there's this townhouse in Newmarket that has a bed, I, it's not ideal because I want to stay in Toronto, but at least I have a place to sleep. And I also felt like it would be a good excuse for me to get away from people I was hanging out with. I'm not like gang affiliated, more like gang adjacent. Like, <laughs> I, like I would hang out with these guys, but anytime some shit would go off, I'd just like go home and watch anime. <laughs> so I flick my cigarette and I go upstairs to my room and then I notice that my stuff on the top bunk has been like rearranged. So I go through my bag and my weed is gone my roots track pants are gone and my underwear is gone <laughs> and then the bunk underneath me ryan who was my bunk mate i just noticed that all of his stuff is gone and i'm guessing he stole my underwear because it was from balenciaga so <laughs> i think he was trying to like make a profit off of my tidy whities <laughs> so i'm running downstairs and i'm asking everyone like have you seen ryan have you seen ryan like no one has seen Ryan until a social worker on site tells me that um, he had a place to stay, so he recently just left. So, fuck. Now I only have the one pair of underwear that I'm wearing, so I tell them the situation, and they tell me to go to the attic where all the other donations are, and I get a fresh pair, and I just want to forget anything happened. To which all the other guys who were staying at the shelter were kind of confused. They were like, no, like, we have to do something. Like, we have to find this guy, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, guys, honestly, like, I just want to smoke weed and go to bed. Like, that I have more stressful matters than my underwear. Until this guy named Mex comes to me. And he's like, hey, like, I heard what happened. Uh, what are you going to do about it? And I was like, nothing. And honestly, I was a little like taken aback by Mex. He was this like tall, you know, long Jesus-like hair. Uh, he kind of had like a swagger to him. He was really cool. Uh, and I, for some reason, I was, just got like really shy. And I was like, I'm just gonna go to bed now. Bye. <laughs> so then the next morning, I go down to the common room where everyone else is at, and people are like, "Good morning." I'm like, "Good morning." Good morning. Like, I had stayed in shelters before, like Covenant House, which is like a lot bigger. It's so, people don't usually care about how good of a morning you're having. So it was a little bizarre for me. And then I'm just socializing with these guys. And a little while later, I go buy some weed. And then I invite them to go to Ball Up at this church that was across the street. So we're there and we're talking, and then one of them notices that I have a copy of How to Die by Seneca. So now we're really fucking high, talking about death and other people who have died in our lives, and I like it for some reason. Like I'm connecting with these guys, and it was like I got that feeling that you know my underwear will be safe. I don't have to worry anymore. <laughs> Eventually, Mech starts hanging out with us, and the great thing about Mech is that he could walk into any room and control its temperature. You know, he could dilute it and keep it cool, or he can like crank it up to a 10. And, sorry. And then we were talking about, you know, where he was coming from, where I was coming from. We were talking about girls, he was talking about his ex, and then I started realizing that we had a lot in common. Like, we were two broke, broken-hearted dudes just trying to figure everything out. I would ask him questions like, you know, what was it like for you growing up? And he'd be like, what do you mean? I'm like, I was a kid, now I'm not. <laughs> or like, I'd ask him questions like, when was the last time you cried? He's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, get away from me. Just like really invasive questions. Eventually we all start working at like a landscaping job. It's like the dead of winter. We're freezing our asses off, shoveling snow from like midnight to like noon the next day. 
We're like racing back to the truck, smoking cigarettes, just trying to get a little bit of warmth. It's like, um, you guys ever seen the movie like Dead Poets Society? It's kind of like that, but we were the Dead Beats Society. <laughs> <laughs> and then one day, um, Max and I, we were just watching a Netflix special and sort of embarrassingly, I was like, I kind of want to do that one day. He's like, okay, bet. So he calls in the other guys. They shove like the TV remote in my hand and pretending it's my mic. And they're like, go on, go on, riff, riff. And like, I shoot the shit with these guys all the time. But for some reason, because now I'm performing, I'm like really anxious and my palms are sweaty. I feel like this is kind of like my eight mile moment. Like it's like a, like a rite of passage. Eventually I'm just, fuck it. So I just started riffing with them. Two of my friends, they pretend to be a couple and I'm doing the whole like, oh, where, how long have you guys been dating? La, 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 la. And the room is like electrified. Like I'm kind of like glowing. Like I feel like this weightlessness, like, like I'm flying. And, sorry, my bad. Um, blah, 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 yeah, 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 so sorry. Eventually, Max and I, uh, we move into uh, one of the rooms that was across the hall in the shelter. And, you know, we would have nights where we'd have really serious conversations and get to know each other a bit more. I would tell them about, a situation that I was having with my family and kind of like being like an older brother he would look at me and be like well have you ever considered you know what it was like for them and that sort of like shifted everything for me and then there'd be other nights where I'd be like writing jokes a lot of them really bad and he we'd like make fun of each other I'd be like oh I'm ex I can't seem to get over my ex who was like really bad for me and then he'd be like oh I'm Johnny I'm like always thinking always in my head always just like ah, 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 ah. and that was kind of like the, the chemistry we had together until one day he comes to me and says that he found he found a place to live and that he's leaving the shelter and I was like, dude, that's really awesome. That's really, that's, that's amazing. And I'm sort of ashamed for feeling this way, but uh, I was also thinking like, no, like, like I can't do this without you. I was sort of like intellectually happy for him. So a few days go by and then I'm helping him pack. I have like this sour feeling in my mouth, kind of like when you're about to throw up, just trying to like keep calm. And then I go to Max and I'm like thanking him. I'm like, thank you, bro. You're like, you're like a brother to me, blah, blah, blah. He's like, please shut the fuck up. He's not, he's not like a sentimental person. Um, so then we go downstairs. He says bye to everyone else. And then he leaves. A few weeks go by. A couple of my other friends who are at the shelter are also leaving. And then another few weeks go by. And then I was sort of lucky to have the opportunity that one of my friends in Toronto had a room available for me. So Mex comes back to the shelter and now he's helping me pack up. And on our way to the city where I hadn't seen him in weeks, we're reconnecting, he's telling me that he's got this new job, I'm telling him that I got this opportunity, um, I have like an interview at this cafe that I might work at, and I'm happy. Like I'm happy to see my friend and like I'm not like pretending anymore. I'm just happy to be with him. And being with Max, you know, it kind of felt like an exhale. Like I could just relax and just be myself with him. So then we get back to my new apartment and I'm kind of just taking in everything, especially what has been happening for the last six months. And me being me, I just kind of turn to him and I'm like, oh, look at us now, you know, from the sheltered slums of Newmarket to the <laughs> towering, tow uh, t towering towers of Toronto's core. You know, who would have thought? And he's like, you're just a fucking idiot. Like, you're such a loser. But I, I see him laugh. And with that, I kind of just know everything's going to be okay. That's my story. Thank you.